Intro How to manifest your dreams? That's a very good question. What kind of dreams do you have? Why don't my dreams come true? I say affirmations, but do they truly work? I live life day to day. I don't think about my dreams. I have dreams, but I truly don't know how to manifest them. Is there any scientific evidence and techniques that help in manifesting my dreams? Mankind has been dreaming for a better world for thousands of years. Unfortunately, wars have been around forever so long. It seems chaos is prevailing upon the land. Yet, this is the struggle between darkness and light. You are a precious piece of the puzzle. When a person <coughs> begins to align his dreams with the quantum field, one's life begins to change. A transformation occurs from me to we. Slowly, over time, an individual realizes that we are all one. An individual begins to transform his or her dreams to a dream for all humanity. Yes, this will take time. Baby steps are needed. Two steps forward, one step backwards. This is how we grow. This book hopefully will help you discover that there is a process that will help you to manifest your dreams and change your life. Just think, all the thoughts that you had since being bored make up your personality. Yet most of the time, we live our lives in remote control. Our subconscious runs the show. 95% of our actions are driven by the subconscious, while only 5% is driven by the conscious mind. Experts estimate that the mind thinks between 60,000 to 80,000 thoughts a day. That's an average of 2,500 to 3,300 thoughts per hour. And that's incredible. Other experts estimate a smaller number of 50,000 thoughts per day, which means about 2,100 thoughts per hour. Yet how many are new thoughts? We have been playing the same record for years. We have the same exact routine. We go to bed. Our alarm clock goes off. We use the same hand to shut it off and go back to bed for five minutes. The alarm goes off again. We shut off the alarm. We stumble out of bed and go to the bathroom. We brush our teeth. We are trying to wake up. Off to the kitchen, we go to brew some coffee. It's time to head off to work, just in time for rush hour traffic. We make a few phone calls along the way. Some of us text when the cars are stopped. We make it to the office and do the same dull routines. I can go on and on. We are our own pharmacy. Every day, our bodies create hundreds of thousands of chemicals. These chemicals create strong emotions. Say, for example, you are angry. Your emotional state will be angry. Therefore, you will have angry thoughts. These thoughts will then create angry emotions. We are caught in a cycle. The goal is to be free. The goal is to be in tune with the quantum field. In order to manifest your dreams, there is some work that needs to do. This book will help you along the way. It's just a foundation to help you on this journey of life.
What is a dream? Dream. Now. A series of thoughts, images, and sensations occurring in a person's mind there in sleep. I had a recent dream about falling from great heights. A cherished aspiration, ambition, or ideal. I fulfilled a childhood dream when I became champion. Synonyms, ambition, aspiration, hope. Verb, experienced dreams during sleep. I dreamt about her last night. Indulge in daydreams or fantasies about something greatly desired. She had dreamed of a trip to Italy. Synonyms, fascinated about, daydream about, wish for, hope for, long for, yearn for, hunger for, anchor after, set one's heart upon, aspire to, desire to, wish to, aim for, seek to, have as one's goal they, set one's sights on, literally thirst for after, I'm dreaming to make it the Olympic team. Personally, I think dreams are to give us hope for a better future for mankind. We all want a better future for our children. We want humanity <coughs> to have a great education. We want the world to have plenty of food for all. We want the world to have decent housing and medical care. Dreams are the foundation for living. Without dreams, where will we be? Our life would be in misery. We will never stop dreaming. The quantum force is not some stagnant energy. It has infinite possibilities. It contains infinite dreams. Dreams are a direct aspect of God and the universe. In India are many stories of the mind of God. God had a dream and created the universe. Modern day scientists believe that the universe is aware and conscious. It seems like ancient stories and present day scientists have come to the same conclusion. There's a quantum field that is present everywhere, is beyond time and space. Do dreams come from thought to energy to matter? Does God have a thought to create the universe? From this thought, there's an infinite energy which creates matter like the Big Bang Theory. Was there a dream before the Big Bang? Who dreams that dream? Do human beings create their own dreams? Can dreams come true? Why is humanity living lives like a broken record? Our subconscious runs the show, and we aren't even aware of it. How does one overcome this predicament? We have our dreams, yet our subconscious runs the show. How do we rewire our circuits to embrace our dreams? Life is an incredible journey. We, as humans, are only skimming the surface of the ocean of life. We really are kindergartners when it comes to understanding life. We are still fighting with one another. We still think that we are separate. Over a century ago, scientists discovered that energy is a common denominator in life. In essence, we are one and the same. Yet, we are still living in Newtonian ways. Society still lives in the same consciousness for thousands of years. We are living in incredible times when mankind fully embraces the unknown. Our dreams will truly come true for humanity. You can start now to discover your dreams and manifest them in your personal life. What is real? What is real? I've been asking this question all my life. I remember in high school, I knew that the keys of the universe lied inside of me. What I didn't have was the key to unlock the door. 
I remember reading the autobiography of Yogi by Paramananda Yoga. He gave a great description of what is real. Imagine going to a movie theater and watching a movie like Star Wars. I first saw this movie in New York City in the late 70s. I was totally immersed into the movie. Yes, I was totally mesmerized. I thought that was as real as you can get. Yet if you turned your head around, what would you see? Streaming from the film projector would be light, which would be projected upon the screen. I always knew that the light existed inside of me and the universe. This made perfect sense. Is the entire universe a dream? The universe gets created. The universe gets destroyed. I remember reading an article in 1972 <coughs> that the scientists believe that the universe is breathing. Granted, it takes billions of years to breathe in and out. I find this fascinating. Everything is created and destroyed. Imagine over 500 cells die each second <coughs> and 500,000 cells are created each second. What an incredible creation is occurred inside of us. Imagine through our subconscious it is directing the show. Yet all this incredible power of creating comes from the quantum field. This field exists beyond time and space. It exists in all universes. This is the creative force. This is the source where the light projections create matter. We come into this world and a flash we leave this world. It seems like a long time, but in reality it's a flicker of the eyelid in time. Ever since the dawning of man, it's a flicker in time. Yet man goes on its very own way and is oblivious to reality. Granted, we have had many incredible teachers like Christ and Buddha. They help mankind to discover their true nature. This book will give you some guidance on how to discover reality inside of you. You can take this advice or not. You have free will. All we are saying is the quantum field exists. There is a field that creates all life. <coughs> the universe is conscious and aware, yet most human beings aren't. We have been living in the same patterns for thousands of years. It's like a, a rat running in circles. War, war, war. We call that civilized and advanced. We think we are advanced. We have no idea what an advanced civilization is. Many great inventions are held back due to the fact humanity would weaponize them. And unfortunately, the atomic bomb was created and let the genie out of the bottle. When kindness rules the land, our civilizations will change in ways we can't even predict. Have you ever seen geese flying in the sky? They are flying in unison. It seems like their minds are merged and they have a master mind. They fly in unity. It's a sight to behold. Fish are another great example. I love to go to the arbor and go into the arboretum where I live. I love to see the koi fish swimming in unison. It's a sight to behold. Can you imagine the time when man will be driven by a central creative mind of love, kindness, and compassion? We will have the awareness that we are all one, at the same time have a unique creative expression. This world will be heaven on earth. This is where we are headed. Yes, this will take time. Who knows how long this will take. John Lennon's dream song will come true. Millions of people are waking up from their slumber. Hundreds of helpful books are coming out. People are waking up and finding ways to discover their true nature. I look back even 50 years ago and yoga was totally out of the mainstream. I remember when I first had a yoga lesson was in a six-week yoga class. It was a class where they hired two yoga teachers to teach this class. Mind you, this was in 1971. 
It was very progressive for that time period. Anyway, after the class ended, I signed up for the yoga class at their yoga studio. At that time, that was a really a radical thing to do. Where I grew up, that was totally unconventional and probably simply weird. Fast forward to the early 90s. My mom and her best friend take classes from the same teacher and yoga studio. Today, all of society embraces yoga. It's everywhere. This is how the world changes. It slowly morphs and changes for the better. You can't see the world's changes through the microscope of present-day events. It seems like you have to rise beyond the clouds of present time, and then you can see the incredible changes that occur. Ponder this sober. What is real? Have you ever asked this question? Are you totally satisfied of, of living inside of your box? Are you afraid of change? What is keeping you from discovering your true nature? Is it, don't tell me what to do? Nobody is telling you what to do. It's up to you to change. Nobody can do it for you. What is the difference between a dream and an outside event? Did you know that the body does not know the difference between what you dreamed and from an outside event that happened to you? The same exact chemicals were released. Over 1500 chemicals are released into your bloodstream. Mind you, this could be positive chemicals which enhance life or destructive chemicals which break down your life. The choice is yours. You are the master chemist. It's by your will alone that you make your own decisions for your destiny. A person who is wise will be consciously aware of his or her dreams. One enters a deep state of meditation. From there, one can program the subconscious for this event to occur. When one uses an elevated state of emotion such as love, kindness, and compassion, along with intent, miracles can happen. When daily one dreams about the events in one's mind's eyes and sees it already occurring, you are rewiring your circuits <coughs> for this event to manifest in one's life. By constantly program your future with emotion and intent, you will bring yourself in alignment with that event. You see, in the quantum field lies infinite possibilities. You are your own genie. When one taps into the quantum field with your positive emotions and intent, you will bring about infinite possibilities. You don't all have to know how it will happen. The rational mind wants to know in concrete how it will happen. The quantum field does not work out that way. Logic does not come into <coughs> the picture. There are infinite possibilities that can occur. The more you have faith and trust, the better the outcome. Also, the more connected you are, the better the outcome will be. You see, we need to tune our minds into the infinite mind. The more we do this moment by moment, the better our lives will be. Presently, to be frank, mankind is living such a stressful state of existence. Common sense is uncommon. The world seems like it is in chaos. It seems like the entire world is in conflict with one another. People can't get along. The same old tapes are being played. Most of our daily lives are reruns from the past. It's like the movie Groundhog's Day, where the same daily routines occur. Fortunately, in that movie, the person realized what's going on, 
and over time changes for the better. We have the same opportunity. We can totally change our lives around and the world at large. We can program our lives just like a software engineer does in real life. When one sees that whenever <coughs> a positive or negative emotion that we carry around is the driving force for our future, when one understands this, a person who is wise will learn about how to drop the excess baggage in life that's weighing you down. That traumatic event that happened 20 years ago is the main driving force for your daily and future events. You see, your mind is a tuning fork. Whatever you focus on, you become. We never learned this in school. No wonder it's so hard to change. Just think, in order for change to occur, we must be in an alpha state of mind, and then we can enter the theta, delta, and gamma brain state. Most of the world, due to stress, is living a high beta state of existence. Many people are so stressed out, they can't turn off the faucet of cortisol and stress hormones. In order for them to manifest their dreams in a positive manner, they must first learn to reduce the stress in their minds. Small baby steps are needed. As I, as I have said, we must reprogram ourselves. Currently, we are on remote control. We have no idea that we are living our lives like robots. That may seem harsh at look at humanity's record for the past 2,000 years. It's like a broken record. War, war, and war. We even honor war. War is obsolete. In the quantum field, there is no war. There is no bickering and fighting. There is no us versus them. There is no separation. God does not take sides. We must become emotional, mature citizens of the universe. We have missed our mark. We think and act like we are separate. Due to this separation, we have millions of obstacles along the way. We are living in a state of local mind where it's all about me. Non-local mind is universal mind. In this state, one is operating in a state of oneness and at the same time living and expressing this in a unique human body. I hope this makes sense. If you look at young children, they expressed this when they were young. Slowly over time, they became completely identified with their local mind. Christ and Buddha were examples who live in a universal mind of existence. Mind you, even the Buddha had to learn how to transform from a local to universal mind of existence. The more a person embraces the non-local mind, the more synchronicity will occur in one's life. One will be in harmony with the universe. One will truly become wise. One will advance to higher levels in the video game of life. One will actually realize the video game exists. One understands there is a jewel that exists within. Ponder this over. Where are you going, my friend? You are never alone. Nine to five existence. I find it fascinating that our past drives our present moment and our future. Scientists say that we live our lives 95% from our subconscious and 5% from our conscious mind. <coughs> they also say our body and mind is one. 
imagine by repeating the same actions day in and day out. We are building grooves into the record of life. Over time, our body knows exactly what to do from the moment you get up to the moment you go to bed. If you are an angry driver, you'll be angry on the road. You will race to your destination, swerving between one lane and the other. It's an automatic response that has many years of conditioning. You don't have to respond to brush your teeth. You do it automatically. This I call a nine to five existence. We look forward to the weekends to party and hate Monday morning, dreading the workday week. All our happiness is dependent externally. This truly won't carry you very far. I remember buying new cars and there was a great thrill for about a month. Everyone around me was so excited to see my car. In a few years, I was bored with the car. It had a lot of maintenance problems. <laughs> I first noticed this when I was quite young probably around seven to eight years old. I received this toy aircraft carrier. I loved it. Yet after a few months of playing with it, I lost my interest. I realized that the outside world has limited happiness. Everything external changes and morphs. You can't hold on to a particular experience. Take the current opioid epidemic today they have to increase their dosage to get the same high as a week ago. Over time, this melts up. Consequently, so many people die of overdoses. It's a ticking time bomb. I feel so sorry for families who have someone taken it. It's a huge toll on society. Personally, I think we need classes in school to teach about positive mental health. Nobody told me in school that we are all master chemists. In each and every thought, we have thousands of chemicals gets released into our bodies. Each thought corresponds to either a positive or negative thought. Because we are so driven by our subconscious, it's an automatic response. We don't even know how to control it. Everybody has trauma stored into their bodies. The intensity of the trauma drives the emotional response. It may have occurred years ago, but the trigger mechanism is still operating today. You would have thought that Western science would teach us today. How much more advanced would be a society if everyone knew when they got angry they are drinking their own poison? In the long term, this will lead to disease. We drive our cars of the body on remote control. We think that external events drive our state of being. Yet, you can learn how to drive your car and be conscious and aware. This is where meditation comes in. It's an incredible tool on this journey in life. Most people think that meditation is only when you close your eyes. The goal is to always to be in state of meditation regardless of what's going around you. Yes, that takes incredible skill and effort. Yet, you just take baby steps, two steps forward, one step backwards. This is how we progress to learn anything in life. It took me a month to ride a bicycle. Here's a cute story about it. Once upon a time, there was two twin brothers named Little Ricky and Little Johnny. Little Johnny was a genius in picking up and learning new things, while Little Ricky was what you would call on the slow side. It took him hundreds of tries to learn new things. For example, one Christmas morning their wonderful parents presented them both with brand new bicycles. Both of them were so excited. Well, they took them outdoors. Little Johnny hopped on his and immediately started riding down the block. Well, Little Ricky didn't have the same luck. In fact, it was kind of funny to see how clumsy he was. He didn't give up. He knew deep down inside he could learn how to ride this thing. It took him about a month. 
The first time he realized that he was actually riding the bicycle, he was filled with joy. He was so grateful. I did it. I did it. I didn't give up. This incident carried him all throughout his life. Every time he had to learn something new, he remembered that experience of learning how to ride a bike. In fact, years later, his wife said that he learned things so quickly. Little Ricky just smiled. He knew that life taught him such a precious lesson, lesson at such a young age. Never give up. Persevere. You can learn anything. It may just take time. Ponder this over. This our current state. If you don't want it changed, then help your children to incorporate these ideas into their daily lives. It's the least you can do for them. You are a genie. Did you know that you are a genie? Your thoughts make up who you are. Whenever you say "I'm so and so," over time you become that. You rewire your circuits to become the state of mind. For example, if you say "I can't do this; it's too hard," you are reinforcing. This old tape, and adding a deeper groove on the album of life. Whenever you think, you even force your attitude, whether it is positive or negative. By the time you are seven years old, all the good, bad, and ugly is stored in your subconscious mind. We replay old tapes in practically each and every moment. You see. You can't separate the mind from the body. This is why, at times, it's so hard to change. One must be aware and conscious. This is why meditation is so important. When one becomes a little aware and conscious, one begins to reprogram life. Suppose someone makes you angry. Most of us would play the same tape from the past. The body would say, "Oh." I know this experience, and would it act immediately? And the brain would secrete over 1,500 different chemicals, and you would then be in an emotional state of anger. Cortisol and stress hormones would be released. As I said before, you are drinking your own poison. Over time, almost all diseases are created by stress. Just think. You could hold on to this instant for years, and each time you think about it, your mind and body doesn't know the difference between the incident that happened years ago and the present moment. The person who you got angry at years ago has long forgotten that this even occurred. It's erased from his memory, but you're left holding on to the boulder for dear life. You refuse to let go. Compound this day in and day out, humanity is playing the same tapes over and over again. This compounds the problems. No wonder we are so we have so much turmoil in our society. Not only do we feel pressure externally, but we also feel pressure inside of us. Over time, we are struggling in the river of life. Many people are fighting to go upstream. We have been conditioned for this. When we say "I'm struggling with life," we are literally fighting and swimming upstream. Life is a drag. We have a hard time getting up in the morning. We are bored with life. We hate our jobs. I saw a survey about a year ago, and 80% of Americans hate their jobs. Wow, that's a huge number. Do you know a majority of heart attacks occur on Monday mornings? Our present state of mind 
can and does directly relate to our health. So what do we do? Modern day scientists know that the mind and body are one. You can't separate the two. Scientists know that you can't reach the subconscious in a beta state of mind. In our waking state, there are two beta states. One is beta and the other is high beta. In the ordinary beta state, one is aware, alert, and conscious. In this state, no stress is occurring. While in the high beta state, we are totally stressed out. Most Americans are in this state of mind. They can't turn off the faucet of adrenaline. The body and mind is totally agitated. They might totally freak out because this weekend they have to spend time with their in-laws. Just the mere thought will cause their head to spin. Our working environment is totally insane. Your job is totally unstable. They can lay you off at any time. When you reach the age of 55 years old, you are considered over the hill. A company is only interested in making profits for their shareholders and don't truly hold you in their best interest. It's the survival of the fittest environment. Did you know that most Americans don't take all of their vacation time? They are afraid of losing their jobs. No wonder they are stressed out. No wonder the, Mer the Europeans laugh at us. They have a job with four to, six e four to six weeks off a year. When I was young and traveled around the world, I would always see tons of tourists from a, a Europe. They told me they had a couple months off from work. They knew how to relax. So what do we do? We realize that our genie thoughts creates over time our character and personality. Moment by moment, the same tapes from our subconscious are being played. It's our own version of Groundhog's Day. We must learn how to reprogram our subconscious. You are living on remote control. You are living on remote control. You must be out of your mind. What do you mean by that statement? I'm in total control of my life. Well, according to scientists, 95% of our actions are dictated by the subconscious mind. Only 5% is by the conscious mind. That's a huge difference. Did you know that most of the time we are playing the same tapes over and over again? We go to our bed, our alarm clock goes off, we use the same hand to shut it off and go back to bed for five minutes, the alarm goes off again, we shut off the alarm, we stumble out of bed and go to the kitchen, we brush our teeth, we are trying to wake up, off to the kitchen we go to brew some coffee. It's time to head off to work, just in time for rush hour traffic. We make a few phone calls along the way. Some of us text when the cars are stopped. We make it to the office and do the same dull routines. We can go on and on. Our bodies perfectly respond to our old tapes. It's old hat by now. It doesn't even have to think, it just responds. I find that fascinating. We can live our entire life and not realize that we are living in the past tapes. What kind of video game of life is this? Maybe the movie Matrix had it right. We are living in a dream and don't know it. We think we are driving our cars, yet they are in remote control. We go to the same boring destination over and over again. 
No wonder the world at large is in chaos. Imagine the Buddhists are one of the original psychologists. They have been studying the mind for thousands of years. They have mapped out the various stages of mind growth for ever so long. They mapped out a pathway to enlightenment. Just think, it was in the 1980s that Western scientists started to research the science of happiness. Before that, it was solely negative mental affairs. Personally, I think many of the world's problems is our current state of affairs. We can't see the forest from the trees. We don't see that we are playing the same tapes over and over again. War, war, and war. It seems like the United States is in a tailspin. We are spinning out of control. Yet at the same time, millions of people are waking up from their slumber. The more people wake up, the easier it will be for other people to wake up. Light is overcoming the darkness. Darkness is only the absence of light. Maybe, just maybe, mankind can turn into a kind man. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? I see that this transformation is going to happen. Science and religion is being merged together. Both of them are talking about the same thing. As I said numerous times that we are hardwired to discover our true nature. There are so many different pathways to open the door within. Society at large is beginning to learn how to practically open the door within. Just think, through the internet, every human on earth has the resource to learn how to find their true nature. These are exciting times. I have mentioned many <coughs> times before that life is like a video game. For all the gamers out there, this is the ultimate game. This game is your life. In each and every moment, you play this game, whether you know it or not. How's that for the ultimate game? Talk about a game that you are playing, and yet you aren't aware of playing that game. Yet, you are playing that game in each and every moment. In India, they would call this illusion or maya. Our five senses make this world so real, yet we only here we are only are here for a small flicker in time. Look, I'm not saying you can't have fun in your life. I'm saying that if you are stuck in a certain level and playing the same tapes over and over, you are stuck. You can't advance to the next level. Many of my friends who, who are stuck playing a video game at some point in time will read the cheat sheets in order to advance to the next level. Mystics have been doing this for thousands of years. There are cheat sheets, yet in reality you are not cheating. Maybe I could call them wisdom sheets. Been there and done that before. I made the same mistake over and over again. This is how I solved it. A kind man will post this message on a tree on your journey in life. Consequently, when you are on this journey, you might be curious and stop and read the message. Here's a message that will help me on my journey. Thank you for that person posting it. Now I know to go to the left when the road splits ahead. You see, signposts are all around. Just imagine, because of our present state of mind, the road ahead is full of darkness. We imagine many dark shadows along the way. We are afraid and alone. When one discovers his true nature, one discovers this journey is a walk in the park. You are never alone. You are walking with your ancestors and laughing along the way. You can't see them, yet they communicate to you in each and every moment. They exist inside of you. All your friends and family who have died exist inside of you. They have never left you. How would you like to experience this? All your pain and suffering will go away. Ponder this sober. Mankind is living on a remote control, whether you are aware of it or not.
dreams do come true. Dreams do come true. Did you know that dreams do come true? When I was very young, I knew that the universe existed inside of me. I couldn't prove it. I just knew it. I didn't know how to meditate. No one around me had a clue what meditation was. It was a completely different and foreign object. Our family had this beautiful Buddha head statue and a standee on it. For some reason, I completely resonated with it. How can I put this into words? I felt that meditation was my true nature, yet I didn't know how to meditate. I carried this dream of learning to meditate most of my childhood life. You see, whatever you focus on eventually comes alive in your life. There is an infinite field of possibilities out there, and with the right intention and right emotion, events align with each other to manifest your dreams. In my case, I was taking a six-week yoga class at high school. This led me to taking a yoga class from the same teacher who taught me yoga in the high school class. One thing led to another. The next thing I knew, I was going from France to India carrying my surfboard. In India, I learned how to meditate. During my initiation, I had such a powerful experience, which still motivates me today. That was 48 years ago. So I learned at a young point in life that dreams do come true. We have to focus on them. I realized from doing research that the mind doesn't know the difference between imagining something and an external event. To the mind, it's one and the same. Combine this with a positive emotion such as gratitude, and a person is rewiring the circuits for this event to manifest. It all belongs in the mind. You can't figure out how it will happen. A quantum field has no rational flow or logic to it. You can't force your dreams to happen. You can't get discouraged. One has to completely trust the quantum field. When one pays attention to the quantum field, it's a hundred percent easier to manifest your dreams. What is in harmony with nature? One realizes that the quantum field contains infinite possibilities. One becomes patient. One realizes that your dream will come true. You just have to be patient and watch it unfold. As for my dream, I'm I'm learning how to meditate. My journey still is alive today. I'm discovering that a huge series of steps have led me where I am today. The dream is still continuing, and I'm blessed being on this precious journey. What kind of dreams do you have? Have you put them on hold? Are your dreams sitting in a drawer, gathering dust? Did you know that you are a genie? All your thoughts that you had make up your personality today. Personally, when I was young, I never thought about that. Society n- never taught me about that. When I was young, I read the book *Think and Grow Rich*. It was a great book, but I really didn't take it and put it into practice in my life. To be honest, it's really been since the early 2000s that I'm focused on this. At times, the concept is so simple, yet our society is so complicated. We are stuck in our boxes since early childhood. For some reason, we can explore the world, yet when it comes to our inner world, we think it's a waste of time. Ask any person, and I'll fly you and your family for an all-expense trip to Maui. You will wine and dine in a first-class hotel. I don't think too many people will pass that up. Oh, and by the way, you don't have to pay for anything. Yet, if I told you, you are the universe. You. Just don't know it. You just don't know it. You will probably laugh in my face. I find find that ironic. What causes us to ignore our true existence? Are we so focused on the world around us that we can't see the signposts are all around us? 
I know that I'm a broken record, yet I'm not the only one. From time immemorial, this has been talked about in so many different ways. Each culture has talked and discussed this using different terminology, yet the essence is one and the same. When one aligns with the quantum field over time, one understands the laws of creation. One understands that we all create the quality of our lives. Even under incredible hardships, man has risen from the ashes and totally transformed their lives and the lives of people around them. They have even affected the world at large. Our true nature is to dream. We will never stop dreaming. Someday peace will, be will prevail on earth. Granted, it will take time. Yet, in the face of eternity, it's only a flicker of the island. from thought, to energy, to matter. We are constantly playing old tapes. Because our mind and bodies are one, we live our lives from the past. We are reactive beings. If, some, if someone says something we don't agree with, we automatically get angry. We don't even have to think about it, it is automatic. This response is hardwired in our circuits. As I said before, from the moment we get up in the morning until we go to bed at night, we play the same tapes over and over again. No wonder our world is in chaos. We have politicians that Twitter early in the morning without really thinking what they are about to say. It's like we are leaves blowing in the wind. I remember the first time I was in India many years ago. I remember this saying, the most difficult thing to master is your mind. Many of my friends when they tried to meditate told me they had no idea of how powerful the mind is. They were kind of overwhelmed. Yet the mind is your friend. The problem is <coughs> we were never taught how to control it and become friends with it. As I said, that Western scientists only recently study the positive emotions of the mind. The East has done this for thousands of years. Ideally, one must be conscious and aware. One must understand that our thoughts go from thought to energy to matter. For example, take an anger. When you have an angry thought that goes through the quantum field, and gets redirected back to matter, your body. Your body captures this thought and secretes chemicals which directly relates to the emotion you thought about. Over 1500 unique chemicals gets released into your system. If it is anger, you're drinking your own poison. We never learned this in our schools. At times, I wonder why. Something so simple yeah, at the same time, we never put two and two together. We think that external events drive our emotional state of being, but in reality, how we think and act drives us to our emotional state of being. Most people don't think that they are in charge of their being. They don't see the correlation between their thoughts and the effects they have on our, sta on your, our state of mind and body. To compound this issue, 
We don't realize that we're playing old tapes, whether we are aware of it or not. Many times I have thought, I can only change myself. I see the struggles that I have. I personally spent most of my life trying to change for the better. I can only offer help and advice. To be honest, no one can change anyone. They must be willing to change themselves. So, you, so we must learn to drive this car consciously in life. <laughs> Imagine, God is in your passenger seat. He will not drive your car for you. Unfortunately, you can't see him. Your car is on remote control. It's swerving all over the road. Imagine the same old tapes are being played over the radio. We react to each song. For each event, we build deeper grooves into the record of life. The wise men in the past used the same process, but they use it for being consciously aware in each and every moment. They take two steps forward and one step backwards. This is how we grow. They are constantly learning in each and every moment to be in direct connection with the quantum field. For example, over time, for example, over time, if someone says something that in the past that would make them extremely angry, they would stop, look, and listen. They, they would then be like the sun in the sky and just smile. They have nothing to prove. You have nothing to say. You just simply broadcast their anger back to them. Over time, the other person won't speak to you like that because so there is no reaction coming back. They can't make you angry. They get a huge charge out of that. I've met some people whose lives are spent in trying to make people angry. To be honest, what a waste of time. Obviously, they have nothing better to do. In order for the world to change, we must change ourselves. We must learn how to rewire our nervous systems. Basically, we are learning to build a new personality which becomes a new body and mind. When one becomes in sync with the quantum field, the more wisdom one develops. This human being will change in every aspect of life. One will understand that they are a master chemist. They are completely responsible for their well-being. This is truly the new dawning of man. Science and religion are driving us to become truly aware. We are advancing on this journey of life. The tools that the great mystics had are available today. Scientists are proving in practical terms how effective they are. In the process, they are fine-tuning them to become more effective for our time. These are exciting times. You have the opportunity to discover your true nature. The tools exist inside of you. Monitoring your thoughts and emotions. As you know, by now we live 95% from the subconscious and 5% from the conscious mind. Most human beings never stop, stop to see the correlation between the mind and body. Many scientists say they are one and the same. They are not distinct and different. Imagine someone pisses you off. That thought creates a chemical in your brain. Cortisol gets released. Stress hormones gets released. Over 1900 chemicals gets released. You are now in an emotional state of anger. This anger gets stored in your body. Many scientists say that cancer is created by angry cells. Most of the time, we have automatic tapes from the past in any given situation. 
Because we are reactive beings, we are like leaves blowing in the wind. We never stop and think what we read before we perform an action. Many people twitter without thinking. So the goal is to rewire our circuits. When someone makes us angry, stop in your tracks. Focus on your breath. Imagine an infinite field of peace surrounding you. By the way, it does, 24 hours a day. This is your true nature. Smile and don't say a thing. When you have your composure back, speak from kindness. Mind you, this is extremely difficult to do. Here's some advice for you on this journey. Write down all the areas that have caused great trauma in your life. Many times, the great trauma never gets processed properly. It is stored in our subconscious. The greater the trauma, the greater the emotional impact. Unfortunately, so many people hold on to the past. A event <coughs> may happen over 30 years ago, and we still hold on for dear life. We still hold a grudge and are angry towards that one person. We need to learn and forgive. We need to let go of that emotion. In the last 30 years, much insight has been in the relationship between the mind and body. There are many different techniques out there to heal and release our emotional scars. Here's one I like. Emotional Freedom Technique is a self-help technique that involves tapping near the endpoints of energy meridians located around the body. EFT works by lowering <coughs> cortisol levels and the body's stress response because it helps to promote relaxation. Imagine you have some anger issue. The first step is to identify the issue. In order for this to work, you need to identify the issue. Makes sense? Step 2. From a scale of lowest 1 to highest 10, what is the intensity? What is the intensity of your emotional or physical pain? Step 3. In this state, one acknowledges the issue and accepting yourself despite the problem. We are going to use anger as our problem. The common setup phrase is, even though I have this problem, I deeply and completely accept myself. The common setup phrase is, even though I have this anger issue, I deeply and completely accept myself. Step 4. This is the tapping phrase. Begin by, ta by tapping the karate chalk point while simultaneously reciting your setup phrase. You may do this for around 30 seconds to 1 minute, concentrating your breath as you do this. The calmer you get, the better results you will have. Karate Chop, Small Intestine Meridian Now, for each one of these meridian points, use a reminder phrase. Supposedly, you suppose you have an anger issue, you would then recite in your mind anger while tapping at these points below. Tap for around 30 seconds at each meridian point. At the eyebrow, bladder meridian. Side of the eye, gallbladder meridian. Under the eye, stomach meridian. Under the nose, governing vessel. Chin, central vessel. Beginning of the collarbone, kidney meridian. Under the arm, spleen meridian. Top of head, governing vessel. When you finish, rate an intensity level. Say that your initial rate was a 9. You rate it now at, at a 5. Repeat this process until you reach the 0. Mind you, some problems will take time to reach a 0. The greater you take responsibility for your thoughts and actions, the greater results you will have. To find all these meridian points, Search, uh, do a Google search for, for tapping, and you should be able to see uh, exactly where these points are. All right, well, that's it. Thank you.
Spying Movies. The definition of a guru is one who takes you from darkness into the light. A rugu is one who takes you from light into darkness. If there is a rugu today, it is the medical commercials on TV. There is a time where they didn't allow it. Drug commercials on TV. That's a long time ago. I won't call it sister, sinister. Okay, I will. The commercial industry has been very effective to program the subconscious. They have used the medium of TV to program your mind and body. They are extremely clever. <laughs> know exactly what they are doing. In the fifty. <coughs> When a movie was being showed, subliminal <coughs> messages would be displayed on the screen, such as buy popcorn or buy a Coke. It would appear so fast your conscious mind wouldn't see it, but your subconscious mind would. This is bad when the FCC figured that out. Well, they have gotten quite sophisticated. Today's drug commercials directly go into your subconscious mind. Imagine some of these same commercials are played over and over again in the evening news. They are slowly brainwashing people without the audience even knowing it. Have you ever wondered why America is so messed up? I could go on for hours. Many of these drug commercials are directly programming you to get sick so you can take their drugs. It is insidious and evil, yet. It is done in such a、uh, soft voice, and nature is all around it. It's sad they know exactly what they are doing. As a capitalist society, they are there solely to make a buck. They want you to get sick. They don't want you to be healthy and take responsibility for your well-being. There is a company called Mind Movies who uses the same top technology. As the drug commercials, yet it's used to bring you from darkness to light. Check out mindmovies.com. Dr. Joe Dispenza made a mind movie for connecting to the quantum field. It is absolutely genius. I highly recommend it. It should be played before going to bed and upon waking up. I play it right before. I play it right before I close my eyes to meditate. The more you play it over time, the mind, body, and soul rejoices in the words. There are words and pictures displayed. Both of them work to put the message into your subconscious. As you know, we need to rewire ourselves. Humanity is living in darkness and needs to embrace the light. Mind movies are a way to program the subconscious in order to help discover our true nature. Meditating upon your dreams. In the 80s, I was interested in Robert Monroe and the Monroe Institute. In fact, I went to the Gateway Program for a week. We had a couple of sessions on meditating upon your dreams. Bob and his crew discovered that when a person enters the theta state, this opens up to the subconscious mind. During this state, one can directly reprogram. The subconscious. People previously have gone to a hypnotherapist. They still do. Yet in this manner, one can go directly. By the way, it saves some money. The Monroe Institute has plenty of tapes that we take you into the theta state. Once you are there, you then can begin to reprogram what you want. Personally, my advice is learn how to meditate. You have all the wiring set up inside of you. Why not take advantage of that? Basically, in a nutshell, these are the steps. 
Suppose you want to buy a new house. We use this as a template for your dreams. Mind you, this came from Joe Dispenza. You could use this template over and over again. Here's the template. First, you have intentional thoughts. Two, you have a symbol. And three, you have that elevated emotional feelings. So let's fill out your intentional thoughts. This is exactly what you are dreaming for. Create your elevated emotions. This is what you would feel like when you manifest this dream. Combine these two and create a symbol. This is very important. A symbol is used by the subconscious mind to interpret your intentions and your elevated emotions. By directly connecting to a symbol, the subconscious can easily take this symbol and rewire the circuits. Mind you, this will take more than one time. Look into the work of Carl Jung. He spent most of his career studying the subconscious mind. Symbols were a huge part of his incredible work. Remember, the mind and body doesn't know the difference between the imagination and an external event. Each time you do this, you are bringing the future to you. You are rewiring the nervous system to bring this dream into reality. Each time you do this, you are recording what you want. Remember, you have absolutely no idea how this will happen. In the quantum field, there is an infinite field of possibilities. Your job is to be as clear as possible. Your job is to absolutely trust in the process. Here's an example for a new O. We have our intentional thoughts. We want three to four bedrooms, open concept, a great price, a raised bed gardens, two bathrooms, quiet neighborhood, near year-round pool, and a great price. Here's our elevated feelings. We want to feel free, empowered, peace, grateful, abundance, and comfort. Now we take our intentional thoughts and our emotions and we create a symbol. I'm creating a very simple uh, symbol, H for home. So, what we do is first concentrate on your breath. Step two, enter the theta state by listening to a theta binary beat tape. This is optional. Over time, by meditating on your breath, one will automatically enter this state. Remember, the tapes are only training wheels. Remember your intentional thoughts. This is what you want. Imagine this. Create your elevated emotions and feelings. One by one, experience these feelings. The more you can sense them and feel them, the more directly you are connected to the quantum field. Remember, thought and emotions are directly tied to one another. You can't have one without the other. Create your symbol in your mind's eye. Try to visualize it. Use all your internal senses. Make it as real as you can. Let this symbol slowly dissolve into the quantum field. Relax. Don't force anything. You can't use brute mental strength for this to manifest. Remember, the more you try to force things, the further away you are from manifesting your dream. This is a whole different way. The more you connect to the positive emotions from the quantum field, the easier this will be. Practice this for a few moments, then just concentrate on your breath. Your breath is your friend. Without your breath, you would not be alive. Behind your breath lies the quantum field. It's keeping you and the universe alive.
closing. Here we are at the end of the book, yet our dreams are yet to be discovered. I see so much hope for humanity. You and I have ultimately the same dreams. We want to see peace on Earth. Remember, you are a piece of the puzzle. The puzzle wouldn't be complete without you. These are exciting times to be alive. Chaos is all around, yet great transformations are occurring. We are on a journey from darkness to light. Hopefully, you will use these tools and a vast tre treasure chest of tools that are out there. We are all unique, and one tool may, me work, may work for one person, and the other person doesn't get any results at all. Be kind to yourself on this journey. <laughs> Life is hard enough without our negative judgment. I believe that we are at the same point in time where the four minute mile was broken. Millions of people are waking up from their slumber. It's like a domino effect. Someday soon, the sun will appear in the sky. A new dawning of man is coming. <laughs>